Hello, Professor Gabor here. Chapter 14, Improving the Customer Experience, an IT Perspective. Probably only need one slide here. Make it as easy as possible for the customer, be it internal or external, to do business with you. And that's it. Um, of course, we'll go through the 16 slides remaining. But <clears throat> think of Amazon, how easy it is to order something. Think of another store whose e-commerce website you might have gone to. And that wasn't as easy and didn't seem as logical and simple to navigate as Amazon. <clears throat> what did that do for your loyalty? What did that do for your wanting to go back? Has there ever, ever been a site where you went to and tried to order something and it was like, oh my God, this is just taking too long and too cumbersome. Forget it. I'll go look someplace else. It happens to me. Um, and I'll relate some of those example, examples, but I know you have the same. So while all organizations give their customers an experience, and believe me, whether it's positive or negative, you're giving your customers an experience. Uh, the, those that give negative experiences or not so positive experiences um, have not committed the time or resources to make sure that they provide that good experience. And it doesn't just happen accidentally. Maybe I guess it could. But it happens from a, a constant look and feedback and trying it. Pretend you're the customer yourself. Have family members and focus groups look at these things and try looking at it and get their feedback. Um, people these days are, especially with online shopping, are less likely to be loyal to the brand. I mean, they may love the brand, but if it's really difficult, you know, and the brand now is not just the the product or the service you get, it's the entire experience. And if it's too hard to order something or too hard to make a change or too hard to get a response on a customer service inquiry, your loyalty is dependent on that as much as it is to how well the gizmo that you bought worked or the service that you received worked. So nothing is infuriating infuriating is not getting good responses or not being able to do what you want and check your order and track your order and uh, change your order or make a return any of those things and these are all facilitated by IT it doesn't matter if you're business to business or business to custom consumer um, the same thing applies to if I'm a business person I might have a great relationship with a vendor but if it's impossible to navigate their systems, uh, a frustration level will increase, and therefore making it more more easy for a, a competitor that does everything right to come in and steal their business. So, excellent! You want this excellent customer experience, and it positively. I don't know if you can trace it exactly. But you have to just know and in your mind that it impacts your top and bottom line. Um, it can be a strong differentiator. If everything is the same and it's easier to deal with somebody than company A than company B, I'm going to go with company A all the time. It could be because of the friendliness of the person that answers the phone. It could be with the ease that I can navigate their website and the customer interface uh, um, pages and be able to execute what I want without even having to talk to a human being. So, so there's many dimensions of this. One is consistency and reliability. Am I getting the same every time? Is my expectations being met or surpassed? So products and services that deliver consistently across channels over time and as promised. It's not only products and services, it's your interface from an IT perspective with them as well. Knowledge and data. Uh, 
do you know about, do they know about your customer experiences in order to better understand and act to improve them? The longer it takes to accomplish something regarding customer service, the less likely a customer is to be satisfied. Here, I'll give you an example right here. Um, I'm kind of a pen aficionado. This is even before I worked for Sanford Brands, which makes Parker and Waterman and um, Parker pens and Sharpies. And I was always a fan of the cross pen company. And for guest speakers, I do order cross pens and have them uh, available to give to guest speakers. And I buy refills and all kinds of stuff. And the last, uh, you know, last year, two of my orders, three of my orders with Cross Pen Company, I was trying to do it online. And I was buying things on deep discount from their sale category. Every time I had to call the 800 number because the it was their online system was unable to take my order. I'm like, what the heck's going on? And I complained to them. Um, the prices were right. The products I was looking for were good. I liked the products. But I was kind of persistent because, you know, I liked the price. If I could have gotten the same thing someplace else, I would have dropped them like a sec in a second. I would have switched to Parker or Waterman, the company I used to work for. But their website isn't even as good as the Cross website. I could have gone to Amazon, but they didn't have the sale products. So I called, talked to Cross, and they since fixed the problem. I said, you know, the inability for a person to place an order, I'm the one that called. So there's probably, for each one of me that calls and tells you you have a problem, there's probably 10 that just balked and didn't buy a product from you. So innovation. IT can help organiza an organization improve its customer experience and become a strategic differentiator. Obviously, Amazon's ability to take orders is vastly superior to many other companies. And so it's very simple. I could just click, click, I'm on Amazon, look for it, buy it, send it to my house, boom, I could be done in eight seconds. So the customer experience has many dimensions. As we talked about, you have the product, you have the price, you have the process in which you engage the company, uh, is there a promotion? You know, how do you handle promotions? Through which channels? And channels by channels, I mean, uh, is it a brick and mortar store? Is it a e-commerce experience? Is it a order online, pick, order online, pick it up at the store, order in the store, have it delivered to your home? Is it an 800 number that you call and pick it up at the store, or have it delivered to your home? All those kinds of things. There's perceptions and expectations one has, and Amazon has, at least for e-commerce, has set those expectations, in my case, at a rather high level. Um, and then there's a rational experience. Does it work? Can I stumble through your website? That's the biggest hurdle for me. And then if I persistently and, and like your products and like your website, is it consistent, reliable? The consistency and reliability is there every time I go. Can I get all my questions answered? Is there, or you know, maybe even do a live chat? And does the live chat actually useful? Um, do I get timely responses if I send an email through your customer service system? And is if if the website is changing, is it changing for the better over time? Those experiences. Um, when I give them feedback, do I get some action? Do I hear from them? And then um, I think they want to know about, you know, this is all from a consumer's customer's perspective. But the cumulative customer expect, uh, experience is the company wants to know all of these things, too. They want to find out your perceptions and expectations, your experiences, how consistent, reliable they are, how quickly they get back to you, uh, demographics, all that. You know, if you're going to have a... Uh, 800 number that says, hey, you have a 20-minute wait and give me a choice of three different kinds of music that I hate to listen to, uh, that's not a good experience for me. A way better experience is they say, listen, we got a long wait, but you're calling from this phone number. We can call you back <coughs> when an operator is free, and then you can go do what you're going to do. So 
this is kind of an interesting graphic here. So, in a modern company like this, where people have many channels for ordering and many channels for returning and many channels, well, a few channels for inquiring, mostly through a web-based experience, uh, IT plays a significant role in the, this experience. So they have your customer relationship management, your CRM, which is kind of important. Uh, we haven't talked much about that, but uh, uh, this is a, a way of tracking customers, what they've ordered. Oh, Mr. Gavor, I've seen you've ordered, uh, you know, the Townsend pen uh, a few times. That's fantastic. Uh, since I have you on the line, I just want to let you know that we're having a special on uh, uh, a clearance on one of those. You seem to like the clearance items. Would you be interested in placing an order? And may I ask how you, why you are always buying clearance items in bulk? I give them as gifts. Oh, fantastic. Um, we can send you an email when there's, well, they do anyway. But if there's specific things you're looking for, we can tailor that for you. Uh, interactive voice recognition. That's, uh, you know, when you call like American Airlines and you just give voice commands and you can change, the, you know, your status and seat number and all that. I really hate those, so I never use them. I always say agent, agent, agent until they give me an agent. Because that's why I call that I want to talk to a human being. Or I just do it online. Online and mobile self-service apps. And notice that online and mobile are two different things. They're, they should look the same. They should do the same things. But the format has to be different to fit the, the, the size of the screen. What's the underpinning technologies? Master data management, uh, knowledge management, metrics, analytics. How does it know it's me when I sign in? You know, Amazon is brilliant at that. They know what credit card. Do you want to use a credit card you used last time? And it has a list of other credit cards I have. Uh, it keeps track of all the addresses easily of things I send it to. Do you want to save this address? Sure, save it. Uh, last time you ordered this. And if it's something that's perishable, like I order Nespresso pods uh, for my North Park office, it will remind me, hey, last time you ordered this, you want to order some more? Uh, oh, yeah, I didn't think of that. I will. If not, I just ignore it. Or if the price is, oh, it seems to be a lower price, let me order some now. All that stuff is important. And to continue on, how, uh, the use of technology is by no means guarantees a positive customer experience. If, if the website works real well and they send me the wrong stuff, that's not good. Or if it takes too long to get it, I mean, Amazon gets it to you usually less than or equal to when they said they were going to get it to you. They're very, very good at this. Other companies, not so much. Or And they're closing the gap rapidly, though. Um, Technology sometimes substitutes people resulting in a less satisfying or a negative experience. I don't know. If it takes longer to navigate the website than to call the 800 number, yes. And I use Amazon as the benchmark again. If I call them, if I call them, I'm not, I don't think I've ever called them. If I need to buy something. My, my wife needed, uh, she has a book club. She wanted to buy the book. Oh, I went to Costco. I knew they have it there. I didn't buy it. Can you order for me on Amazon? It took like, I don't know, 15 seconds. Seriously. It can't be any faster than that. It was a tremendous customer experience. And Amazon is really good because if they don't have it in stock, they tell you right then. They will only sell you something that they have in stock. Or if they know it's coming, give you the option if you want to wait. So if your technology is not creating a more meaningful and positive experience, you should reconsider how much technology you're going to use and how you're going to use it. It should be, you know, there's companies will say, oh, you can go to the website and do this. And I'm like, oh, God, I've been to your website. I hate it. It's I, I got to click so much stuff and I can't remember, you know, it's not easy to navigate. It's a pain. Again, I'll refer to Amazon. Easy to navigate, I know, probably because I use it more often, but it's it's 
it's like the difference between like the Apple iPhone when it first came out. It had that user interface that's just easier, that was easier to use than anything else that was out there at the time. I think the gap is narrowed with um, the Android phones, but it's just so simple. So why shouldn't we be looking at that and if, if we're in an IT class and talking about customer experience using web-based B2B or B2C? So the, uh, the experience of customers is essential for ITY. Visioning, the ability to envision a more creative customer experience, a better, easier, faster, quicker customer experience. And you only get that by focusing on a customer and not what you need. Um, the business and IT function need to become more customer centric. You would think that makes so much sense and that businesses exist to serve customers, but that's not always the case. And this will redefine large parts of business uh, processes and systems as well it should. And you're designing things for utilization, putting it into play. It must be useful. It must be usable. It must be used. And it must be easy and logical and intuitive to do all those things. Um, you should keep track of your data well. I don't know, ask if, 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 and if it's a third party website that you're using, we're using Canvas. And if Canvas doesn't work well and it gets wonky, it shines a bad light on me. Um, sometimes the bad light should be on me because I failed to populate it properly. But making sure the right data is in the right place at the right time and all well configured. The devil is in the details, as they say. So this is very important stuff. So, and then delivery. Execution is where it all comes together. Anybody can take an order. Anybody can take a complaint. Anybody can take a customer service inquiry. Any, but, you know, even the 800 number staff, this, that, can do call, all kinds of things. If they then do not deliver on the non-IT side of it, the transmission, you know, the, the delivery of the goods or services, the rectification of the billing error, the whatever it is you called about, you know, hey, it was a great website, but gee whiz, the back office is not so good at it. So what are the steps to improving customer experience? Well, you have to have a customer mindset you have to have a quality improvement um, mindset and methodology in the company. You've got to get the voice of the customer somehow and get their feedback on how the system is being used. And then you have a chance of, of, of doing all this. So you have to have a clear customer service uh, relationship strategy and value proposition and maybe use a CRM and have it configured and, and, and working properly. You want to probably have central management and a senior executive, a single senior executive, with responsibility for this experience. You want to have an integrated business and IT strategy to develop the roadmap for improving the customer experience. You know, you want to uh, one view of the customer and one common set of business rules as much as you can. Identify and develop new capabilities to deal with customers and not just business users. And you want to keep working on this. And you want to keep working on this and have common data and integration across all your applications and reliability. So it's essential to deliver that consistent and reliable experience that we talked about. So in conclusion, the experience today for customers is uh, is critical to organizations' current and future success. Not only in the IT interface, I mean, that applies across the board. Second, you want to play an integral part in almost every customer 
experience initiative, IT should be part of that where it counts. Um, and it, it really, even in the delivery, because if, you know, think about it again, Amazon. It communicates with me exactly. Your delivery is on the way. You, your, your order will be delivered today. It will be delivered at between 2 and 4 o'clock today. It's been delivered. Here's a picture of it lying on your porch. How nice. If I'm home, I didn't even hear it come. I go out and get the box. So it's integral to almost all customer experience initiatives. And the more you are an IT company, the uh, more you are an e-commerce based company, the more important it becomes. So if IT is supposed to be business centric, and we've talked about that a lot, well, part of being business centric is to be customer centric. So keep the customer in mind, keep the business in mind, IT folks. And that's it. Thank you very much.